I've just done an interesting and quite destructive video with this pink lamp, but it wasn't as destructive as I was hoping for, so I'm going to just re-record this as a short synopsis video so you guys don't have to sit through quite a long and boring video watching the temperature rise. So basically what happened was I was playing about with this pink golf ball type LED lamp and uh, I opened up to see if it was pink LEDs or white LEDs. I had a sneaky suspicion it was white LEDs and it was. But I quite like these ones. These are uh, these are different from the normal golf ball type lamps in the fact they've got the hard... It's it's not the sort of polythene type cases. The, is it polythene? Yeah, polythene I think is what the, they use, high density polythene. But this is a, a much harder plastic and it's it, it's glossy. It looks like glass lamps. It feels quite good. And while I had it open, I was poking around and round and checking how many chips were in the LEDs just by putting a meter across them, and it turns out it was just one chip. So it's like five LEDs being run at a fairly high current to, just to get the brightness up. And uh, while I had it open, I accidentally, didn't realise at the time, but I, when I was probing one of the LEDs, I actually lifted the top off the LED a bit. And when I plugged it in again, it started, you know, it, it was drawing power, but it wasn't lighting. And I thought, well, where's that power going then? And it turns out the electrolytic was getting hot. So I thought, well, let's uh, do a wee summary of what's happening here and then see how far it goes. So here's the schematic. And it's the generic, you know, LED schematic. It's what you'd expect. It's got the series capacitor, quite a high value, 470 nanofarad, 400 volt, and a 510k discharge resistor across it. It's got the rectifier. Oh, sorry, I'll show you the bits. Here's the, the main current limiting capacitor. And it, the fact it limits the current is what actually saved this from blowing up. So it's the this is the main current limiting capacitor. There's the little bridge rectifier, the wee square black thing that converts it from AC to DC. Then is the remnants of the electrolytic capacitor here, which is 47 microfarad at 50 volts. And it's also got a 510k resistor across it, which is mainly there to actually just act as a small load so that the LEDs don't just glow when the lamp's supposed to be off if there's slight leakage through the mains wiring. Then there's a 47 ohm resistor in series and then five LEDs in, in series just spaced around the outside of the, the circuit board. And the slight niggle here is that if you look at something like, say, a Poundland LED lamp, the Poundland one has a 400 volt rated capacitor, but it's quite low value. In this case, it's 2.2 microfarad, which means you get a little bit more ripple. But by using a lower voltage uh, and a higher capacitance, they can reduce that ripple, but if one of the LEDs goes open circuit, then theoretically the voltage across this capacitor can go up to 330 volts, which it did. And uh, so I drilled a hole in the side of the lamp and I stuck a thermocouple in and then I drilled a hole in the circuit board and I heat shrink sleeved. The, this heat shrink didn't used to be sort of yellow, it's, it's been discoloured with the heat. I heat shrinked it onto the side of the electrolytic to monitor the temperature and then plugged it into the mains and uh, monitored the temperature and the temperature gradually crept up to 178 degrees centigrade or celsius and it did make the odd pop or crack now and then but nothing really major and what actually happened was although it, it kind of domed but it, then it actually pushed out against the top and it's interesting to note it pushed out against the plastic inside and melted it slightly and once it reached about 178 degrees centigrade, the temperature started going down. I thought, right, that's not feeling dramatically. And it has domed the capacitor and also slid the capacitor off. It's actually gradually pushed it off and it has vented out. And the inside of this looks a bit sort of brown and brown and sad inside. But um, it is intact. It didn't certainly hasn't gone bang, and it, it must just be the fact that you know this capacitor has been limiting the current, so this is just vented in a controlled manner, and the electrolyte did coat the inside of this. It, it's notable that the electrolyte smelt of it smelt like sesame oil, um, and then I decided I should wash that electrolyte off my fingers. It's probably dodgy. I'm not 100 percent sure about that. But uh, nothing really major happened. The, the foil in this is really thick. I didn't expect to be quite... And, you know, it doesn't look a very large area of foil. I guess it's just the, the wondrous science of electrolytics. It's not a lot in there at all, is there? Uh, but anyway, the thing uh, had, has just gradually vented. It heated up, it lost the electrolyte, and then it cooled down again. It did so in a controlled manner and just left a light coating, a condensation of the electrolyte on the inside. It didn't even short from the live pin at the back to the outer casing uh, and do anything dramatic. So 
The answer to the question of what happens when these low voltage electrolytics are affected by the LEDs going open circuit and the voltage going up to the full mains voltage, the answer is that they, they seem to fail in a controlled manner by just hissing and gently venting off the electrolyte in a controlled manner. So that was, a, that was an interesting experiment. As I say, the video, I, I've got the whole thing of video, but it's just far too long and it's, it's just boring. You know, you're just basically watching the temperature on this uh, thermocouple gradually creep up and then gradually creep down again with a very, very rare sort of fizz from inside and that's it. So this summary is probably just a much better option and it shows you what happened. A little extra bit for this video because it's fascinating. I I didn't I don't think I've ever taken an electrolytic capacitor apart, not intentionally, and uh, I I I always thought that it was going to be quite tightly wound foil and uh, separator, but for a forty seven microfarad capacitor, this thing has less than two inches of each foil, less than fifty millimeters, and th an equal sort of amount of separator and I know that to get a high capacitance in these they rely on a quite heavily textured surface in the foil and the liquid electrolyte in there but I just didn't realise there was so little in it that it's, it's just a tiny amount in here um, so that's uh, that's quite interesting to know 47 microfarad and that's all that's in it in terms of foil and separator